Okay. Review for the test. This test, guys, is going to cover busways. So we're going to have some stuff about busways, some exercises about generators, and something about transformers. So three different topics in this test. Transformers, generators, and busways. So we, just a quick reminder, this is not the first time we touched busways. You guys have, you, everybody's looking at the same sheet that I'm looking at, right? You have it in front of you? Okay. So do me a favor, yes, grab, make sure your DeWalt is handy, and also make sure your, uh, your NEC code book is also handy, guys, for these, because you're going to be uh, good stuff. For the test, guys, tomorrow, um, if you want to write the formulas, great. The only thing I don't want to see in the front of you is the example. Write the formulas. If you're a professional, you should have all your... Uh, um, your formulas in the front of you, all the resources, but I don't want to see an example in the front of you. Cool? As we have done in the past. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and start. Let me see if we can. The first thing, guys, is question number one will be about busways, busway sizes. It could be a plug in busway, a feeder busway, or a trolley busway. The calculation really wouldn't make a difference. In this case, most likely it's going to be a plug-in because we have equipment to plug it in. In this case, um, actually, my friend, I have four motors uh, or four machines. Each one of them is 20 horsepower, 325, and 530, and 6150 horsepower each. And I need to size the busway and size the... So what I need to size first is the busway itself, the overcome friction device, and the feeder that feeds the busway. Three things I want to size for this system. I need the actual size of the busway, the plug-in busway, the overcome friction device that will take that baby, as well as the feeder that feeds it. Any question, guys, about what's required from this example? Okay. The first thing we need to do, guys, the method that I would use with busways, um, which is, I believe, the proper method, is you need to go to 240, you need to go to 430.250, like we have done in the past. You're going to go find the full load current for all these three-phase motors. All of them are three-phase motors. We no longer deal with baby ones uh, that's not three-phase motors. So when you use red here, uh, or green maybe, to indicate the new stuff that I'm going to install. So, um, Nick, my friend, if you go to, two, uh, to article 430.250 and you find the full load current of a, two, a 20 horsepower under 460, which is 480, um, anybody came up with different than 27? 27, and you multiply it by 4. Anybody knows why we multiply it by 4? We have 4 of them, right? If you go to the 25 to the same table, you're going to get 34, and you're going to multiply them by 3, and first we multiply them by 3 because we have 3 of them. If you go to the 30 horsepower guys, the same table, you're going to get uh, 40, and you're going to multiply it by 5 because we have 5 of them. The 150, I split it into two. Any, uh, anybody remember how, why we split the largest, fattest, fluffiest motor to two? Because we're going to add 25% on the largest motor. Okay? I have six of them, though. I want to split it into two sections. So the first one is going to be 180. So I have 180. I'm going to multiply the 180 by, look what I did, 1.25. 1, because there is 6 of them, I took 1, and the 25, the extra 25% of the largest motor. Right underneath it, also 180. Now, Nick, if I took 1 as the largest, the leftover from 6 is what? 5, so I multiplied it by 5. Any question what I did here to split? I took 1 out of the 6, 150, as the largest, fattest, fluffiest motor. Um, and multiply by 1.25 because it's the largest motor based on the code. And then um, in the rest of them, it's 5. I multiply it by 5 because they took 1 for the, the largest. Any question about this little step? That's probably the confusion one, if there's anything to be confused with. And then the ne next is add them up. Plus them. Add them up. Add them up all. If you did that, you would end up with 150. Uh, 1,535 amps, 1,535 amps, 
1535 amps. Um, now, my friend, if you take the 1535 amps and you take them to semi industry standard from the vault, they'll give you all the listing of the plug in and feeder bus width. If you guys go there, 3 13, which you should have it, you should end up with 1600. The next standard is 1600 amp. 1600 amp plug in bus width. So you guys are going to grab this number tomorrow from the wall because that's not in the code. You're not going to find it in the code. 1600 amp. Any question, guys? Yes, sir. You heard from my client. Yeah. When I did a lot of people, I split this, this six into two, two parts. One is one of them and five. Six, I split them into uh, groups of one and a group of five. The five multiplied by 180 and the one, I assume it's the largest, fattest, fluffiest motor and I added 25% on it. In the bigger scheme of things, guys, 25% on the largest motor on a system like this is worthless. If you if you do the calculation without the 25%, it wouldn't make a difference. Because the system is so big, 25% on one motor, it, it doesn't make a whole big of a difference here. But right. we will what we if, still do it. But what if you're multiplying by, by all six of them? We can't talk about the by all six of them. Yes, it would. You're not supposed to do. You're supposed to take one largest, the largest motor out of the whole system here. I have, um, I have 10, 15, 18 machines. 18 machines. I need to pick the largest machine and multiply it by 1.25. Any question, guys? So the largest machine happened to be one of the 150 motors. Only one of them. Any question? Okay, so that's the first thing you're going to do. Cool. Move on. Got it? So, you need me to read any of my nice handwriting skills? Let me know when you're done. Done? Thank you. Okay. The next, guys, piece of cake, the next that we need to do is we need to go, I'm going to write with green. The new stuff is going to be color green. The next is we need to go size over competition device. What I would do, I use the same amp uh, for sizing over competition device. One, five, three, five amps. Take it this time to NEC 2011, 2011. Um, 240.6, and if you guys go there, the next standard will be 1600. So we hit the jackpot. And if it's not a standard, where we, where do we go? We go up to the next standard, 1600. So we have a 1600 amp circuit breaker to feed this baby. Now, rest because I am higher than 800 amp when I size my feeders, I have to match the over competition device. Because I'm higher than 800 amp. Up to 800 amp, I could have sized the feeder based on 1535, up to 800 amp. But obviously, this is higher than 800 amp. Because we're higher than 800 amp, we have to match our feeder, must match the over competition device that protect the bus with. So, any question guys about the over competition device before we move into the feeder? For the feeder, I say match over competition device. So you take the 1600, but they don't make a 1600 amp THHR conductor. They don't have them in the market. So what I did, guys, I, I, I paralleled four. Why four? Because four can give you 400 amp, which is close to the cutoff. Remember that cutoff, 400 amp or less, or cutoff for paralleling rule of thumb? 
Then you guys take this one to 310 table, 310 lot 15, B16, under 75 degree column. And if you go there, you're going to end up with four sets, parallel four sets of three conductors. Each one of these babies is 600 kcm, T, H, H, M, unless I know otherwise. So here's my... This is how you're going to write it. Four sets of four conductors. Each set is for condu uh, three conductors, 600 kcm. Should I, should, I could have parallel, if you know, Chris, if you went and you parallel five of them and you end up with five sets, it doesn't hurt my feeling. The rule when we parallel, guys, you want to parallel the least amount of sets and you still hover around the four, the six, the 500 kcm. That's kind of the rule of thumb. Hover around the rule of thumb for paralleling is to stay the least amount of runs is the best. But also you don't want, I can, the least amount of runs is to, you, to do two of them and end up with like 2,000 kcm cable. That will be so hard to find a conduit that fits them and pull them. So the rule of thumb, the least amount of conduits of runs and hover around 500 kcm. 500, 600 pushing it a little bit, but even lower than that. Okay. Now, neutral. I might not need a neutral at all. So the neutral could be zero here. No neutral for this. If all of them are three pairs, no neutral. But if, but I'm going to size it if I need a neutral. What should I do? I'm going to size it if I need a neutral. What should I do? Most of these guys don't have a neutral. All of them are one, are uh, 480, and you plug them in. If we, if we, I need a neutral, here's what I go. I always default to 220.61 from the code, 220.61. If you guys go there, it will tell you the neutral size. Um, the first thing you need to do is you take the 1600 amp that you signed based on, okay? And you take the first 200 amp, these are sacred cows, don't mess with them. Anything lower than that, which is 1600 amp minus 200, cut these by 0.7. And where did I get this? from the code and then plus them, add them. When you end up with this, guys, you end up with the 1180 amps. You end up with 1180 amps, okay? Then you do the sizing. So you, you basically reduce your neutral because the code allows you to cut anything by 70% higher than 200 amp, okay? So the rest is piece of cake. Then. Uh, then I'm going to start with 1180. Now, Chris, since I'm already locked with four sets, I have to do four sets. So I go. I have to do four sets. I have no choice because the phases are four sets uh, for the most part. That will end up with 295, 295 amps. Okay? And if you go to 295 amps, if you take this one to... Um, if you take this one to 240.66, guys... So the same thing, you take um, 295, take it to table uh, 310.15, B16, under 75 degree column. Okay, so let me write them in a different color here so it looks right. So we're going to have four sets. If you do that, you're going to end up with four sets. And each set is going to be one conductor. And each conductor is going to be 350 kcm. T, H, H, and N. T, H, H, is N. Yes, sir. You get 1,600. Yep. Did you add them up? Did you add the 200 to it? Yeah. I don't do the, all the steps, guys. I Yeah. Does it make sense when you add the 200? Cool. So what this would do to you guys, it'll get you a smaller neutral. Now... William, my friend, 95% of the time, your neutral does not exist in a bus list. You don't need a neutral. All of them are three-phase. So you don't even carry a neutral conductor. It will be a waste of money. Imagine I have four sets, four times one, four conductors, each each one of them is 350 kcm, um, THHN. Each, say, each one of them is going to be 100 feet. Imagine the amount of money that, for what? For not, nothing to be tied to it. Okay, any question guys about this before I move to the next one?
So we size them neutral. When um, when we size all of them, guys, what I did, when here's how it's going to look like. Four runs, I, you guys have this. And then I want to size the equipment ground conductor. Which color should I use? I want to size the equipment ground conductor. Let me erase these A, B, C, D, and a neutral. This should be, this space should be A, B, C, neutral, and a ground. Now, if this was, if I'm using PVC, I need an equipment ground conductor. If I am to size an equipment ground conductor, here's how we're going to do it. You're going to take the 1600 AM, 250.222, 250.122, and if you go there to size an equipment ground conductor, guys, we're going to end up with uh, four sets, four sets of one conductor. Each one of them is going to be four out. If I did that right, four out. A, W, G, T, H, H, and green. To size the equipment grounding conductor, you need one four sets. The code says if you are paralleling it, you have to run a full set in each one of them. If you're paralleling the phases in a neutral, the equipment grounding conductor has to be a full set, not even parallel. These are not parallel. A full set in each one of them. Yes, sir. Yes. Because look at what I'm doing. I'm using a PVC Schedule 40 here. If I'm using an EMT, I don't need it. But it's a good idea sometimes to install it for feeders, guys, anyway. Okay, so that's basically what question number one would be about tomorrow. Any question? Can you guys fill these? You imagine how each one of them is going to have five conductors. Phase A, B, C, neutral, and ground. And equipment ground and conductor. Does it make sense? Any question about question number one? Jackson? Hello? Let's go. Yes. The, if you look up the uh, grounding electrode conductor, we're not doing a grounding electrode. We're doing equipment grounding conductor. I'm just saying if you did, it seems like it, that appears to require a smaller. If you do an equi a grounding um, uh, electrode grounding conductor, a grounding electrode conductor, if you do a grounding electrode conductor, you need to take four sets, multiply them by four. That will get you six times four, 2,400. And the largest that you can get is what? Yeah. That's it. That's it. So yes, the equipment grounding conductor is larger than the grounding electrode conductor. So you're feeding a four-inch pipe into a three-inch pipe. No, they're not tying together as in, uh, in pipes. They're not no, tying. Where does yeah. it run? Doesn't yeah. it all eventually go to the? Conductor, yeah. The yeah. But you see, the reason why they, this came up to be a big boy, mm -hmm. the four art, is because we're paralleling. I see your point, though. But when you go to the grounding electrode system, just FYI, you wouldn't find only three art. You'll find multiple three arts because we tie to the water wind, we tie to the to the ground rod, we tie to the steel. Um, when we when we went to Boston Scientific, I don't know if you guys paid attention to the grounding electrode system. They have a 500 kcm conductor ring around the whole building, and they tied every um, a ground rod every 100 or so, and um, so that's typical in major buildings. So this is the bare minimum by code, but there's no conflict on that. But I see your point. Oh, yeah. Okay. The metal will be the metal itself will be ground, the ground the shield or the the, the frame is going to be the grounding system weighted for ground. Let's go to the generator. Any question, guys, about this before we go to the gen? Any question about this before we go to the generator?
The next question would be is for I have 431 kV air, 480 volt, three phase, three phase. This is a three phase, three phase. And I need to find a, a, a generator size that can feed that baby. Um, so I want to remind you a lot about that I'm giving you everything in KVA. Can you guys see it? It's not KW. I don't need to change KVA to KW or KW to KVA. This is already done for you. So uh, let's use green. So I have the following that I need. I need to size the following for this. Number one is gen size. Gen size. Number two is the over temperature device for the gen. And number three is the conductor that feeds to the gen. Number four is the grounding electrode conductor for the gen. And number five is the main bonding jumper for a separately derived system generator. Everybody can see guys, here's a grounding here. There's the neutral and I bond them, bond them as a separately derived system. Typically separately derived system. I need to size five things, five things for this generator. Okay, so let's go ahead first and size the generator itself. The generator, guys, you're going to take the four, oops, let's use a different color because this is red. Um, you're going to take the 431, take it to, um, what is that, Dewalt that you guys write it, Dewalt, it's not the one that I asked you to write it under. If you have not gotten these, please let me know, I gave you a sheet for them. It should be Dewalt. If you wrote them there, you want 3 13, 3 13, or Chad's sheet. I added them. I gave you guys a sheet there. If it's not, you should add this there. If you haven't added them, if you guys go there, if you don't have, they are not in 3 13. They should be added in 3 13. If you don't have them, I have a sheet that I gave you. I can give you a copy of the sheet. You, if you go there, you're going to end up with 438. 4. 38, the next standard, KVA, typically. Now, tau, that's for the test. In real life, you're going to use the common software that I, I gave you guys. I gave you a common software. You're going to grab the size from common software based on the, 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 the loads that you have. And the KVA, basically, step number one, and I hate, to, I hate to use it. Step number one will be done by a software for you. Okay? All right, so that's the size. Typical size based on comments. The second thing when we find the size is you need to take the size for V8K and find the over temperature device for it. So first thing you need to do with 1.78 times 480 because the system is 480, right? It's a 480 system. 480 system. You find the flow current 527, 527 amp. This bib is going to be sucking 527 amps. Okay. Then, then you're going to take. Um, 1.15 from the generator code multiplied by 527. You get that will get you 606 amps. And I know for six amps, some of you might say, Chad, I'm going to go to 600 amps. Yeah, six amps. What's your next standard? If you take this one to the next standard, take it to next standard here, which is 24.6. The next standard will be 700. Now, some of you said, Chad, I'm going to put a 600 because 6 amps are, I can digest them. Right? So, that's okay. Write it down and it's okay for me. 700 amps. So, but I'm just going to go strictly by going to the next standard. One, 1.15 um, coming from 445 445 dot something 
Okay, and this is usually for conductors. I, if you go there, it's for conductors. I size the over temperature device to protect the conductors. Okay, so here's my, uh, let's write it down. Where did that came from? This is 445.13. I can't emphasize, this is for conductors, but I use it to size uh, the over temperature device because I match the conductor to it. Okay, next, generator size. The generator size that you're going to be using, I said match over temperature device. Match over temperature device. And this is also from 445.13. Same calculation. Uh, generator feeder size, match over temperature device. So what, what was my over temperature device size? I have a 700. I, I need to parallel here. Divided by 2. So that will give me a healthy 350 amp. Take it to, mm, take this one to a table, 310.15 V16 under 75 degree column. That will give me a healthy two sets of three conductors. Each one of them is 500. 500 KCM, THHN, unless I know otherwise. THHN, could be THHW. For the neutral, for the neutral guys, I apply the same rule. I take the 700 and the first 200, sacred cow, leave him alone. Anything 700 minus 200, cut them by 0.7, and add up. And add him up. If you do that, that will give you 550 amp. I need to parallel again. So I have to parallel 550 divided by 2 equal 275 amp. Take it to table 310.15 V16 under 75 degree column, like we have done before. And your baby would be two sets of uh, one conductor, each one of them is 300 kcm and THHN, THHN. If I parallel two here, guys, I'm stuck with paralleling two here. I have no other option. If you parallel two here, you're stuck with paralleling two here. That's it. Any question guys about sizing the feeder phases, the generator feeder phases, as well as the over temperature device? Let's go to the grounding electrode conductor and the main bonding jumper. Can I move? Everybody's okay? Yes, no? Cool. Okay, grounding electrode conductor 250.66. Grounding electrode conductor, guys, if you parallel the code C, you have to multiply your two sets. When you parallel, you take the two because you parallel two sets, multiply them by 500, not 5,000 like I did. 500 KCM, and that will get you a healthy 1,000 KCM. You take your 1,000 KCM to table 250.66, and you end up with one, only one solo conductor, and one odd, and two odd. One two odd conductor, only one. Only one conductor. That's number four, the one that's going through the steel of the building. Any question guys about this? The second one is the same thing, the main bonding jumper. The main bonding jumper, 
you're going to go to the same calculation, 2 multiplied by 5, 0 KCM, end up with 1, 0, 0, 0 KCM. <clears throat> you're going to take this baby, KCM, you're going to take it to the following. Table 2, 50.66, and you also have to pay attention to 2, 50.28, main bonding jumper, or system bonding jumper, main bonding jumper, or system bonding jumper, Either way, you're going to end up with same size. Two on. One conductor, two on. Can I go higher than two on? Be my guest. Higher is better, but you're, you know, you, you have to find you have to find the happy medium between wasting your time and the client's time and your client's time and money and providing the, the proper protection for your generator. That's it. Now, William, if, if this number tomorrow is higher than 1100 KCM, then you have to multiply it. There's another step from 250.28. You have to multiply it by 12.5%. Only if it's higher than 1100 KCM, which in our case, it's not higher than 1100 KCM. Okay, last question. Last one. The last one is a transformer. The last question is a transformer. And my transformer guys have the following. I have a delta Y, the most common transformer, delta Y. On the primary side, I have 4160 volt. On the secondary side, they have 482.77. The impedance is 5%. And the size of the KVA size is 500 KCM. I need to size the following. Number one, the feeder, the primary feeder. Number two, the secondary feeder. Number three, the primary fuse. Number four, the secondary fuse. Number five, the short circuit. Okay? Everybody knows what we need to size for this transformer? We need to size <clears throat> the feeders on the primary and the secondary and the fuses on the primary and the secondary as well as the short circuit. Any comments about the given? Anything that you want me to read for you? Phase A, B, and C, phase A, B, and C, delta Y transformer, solidly grounded right here you can see, right in here, solidly grounded system, no impedance, nothing. The secondary is 480 slash 277. 480 slash 277. Okay, let's go ahead and start sizing, guys. The first thing you need to do is take the 500 KCM. I'm doing the primary feeder. Just a quick reminder, the primary feeder is 4160, 4160 volt. So that's a high voltage, medium voltage. So take this divided by 1.73 times 4160. That will give you a healthy um, 69.4 amps. Now, since this is a medium voltage, so th since this is a medium voltage, guys, I would size directly based on 69.4. If you want to multiply by 1.25, be my guess, and take it all the way to cable. 310.60. Um, actually, I have to find 310.60.77, I believe. Yes, Chris? Oh, sorry. Um, so, yeah, 310. you've got current divided by the value of the cable. So it should be KVA. K. V A. KCM would be disaster. KVA. So 310.16, <clears throat> not 16. We're going to go to 310.60. Uh, uh, let's go to 310.60, that big boy, that's 77. The one that we went to, guys, that's 77. Right here. 310.60C. That's what I'm looking for. The 60C77. 
That's the table that we're going to go to under which column? We're going to go under MV90. MV90. The medium voltage 90. If you guys go under this table, because it's medium voltage, you're going to find the three conductors. I need three conductors. Each one of them, the size would be number six. And the, and the type is MV-90, insulation, medium voltage, 90. <clears throat> so we go to a different table, table 310.60C77. Under MV-90, the most common. Oh, that's 500, that's not for coil, that's total. The no, that's 500, yeah, cool. Oh, okay. That's three-phase transformer. It's a three-phase transformer. Okay, any question guys about, about the primary feeder? That's it, the hardest one is the primary feeder. Any question? Let's go to the secondary feeder if you guys don't mind. Uh, let's go to the secondary feeder, the same thing, you take the same 500, KCM, KCM, what's with the KCM check? 500, it's because of the 500 KCM, 500 KVA, 1.73 times, which voltage? 480, because now we went to the secondary side of the baby, that will get you a healthy 601 amp. 601 amp. Okay. Now, be my guess to multiply this by 1.25 and size it. I assume we already taken the size of this one and I size it directly. So 601 divided by 2 because I will parallel. That will get me 301. And if you go to table 310.15 B16 under 75 degree column, that will get you the following. Two sets of um, the conductors that I have, two sets of three conductors. Each one of them is five, 350 kcm this time, THHN. <clears throat> two sets of 350 kcm conductors. With parallel. Any question is about that piece of cake, huh? Are you safe? Can you save this to a PDF? Yep. File or something? No, no problem. It's kind of funny, whenever we look for those, they seem to disappear. The PDF? Okay, I'll size it. I'll size it. Okay, so uh, did they do any mistake? Six oh two again. Six oh two. One point seven. We're not gonna fight over an amp. <laughs> an amp is you can uh, so we take the six oh one for the neutral guys. Um the same thing that first two hundred leave them alone. Anything higher, which is six oh one minus two hundred times 0.7, add them up, that will get you a healthy 480, 480 amps. And if you go down, you take the 480. Now, William, my friend, you have no chance. You have to parallel, divide by two, give you 240 amp. You need to take this one to table 310.15B16 under 75 degree column. And that will get you a healthy the following two sets of uh, one conductor. Each one of them is 250 KCM THHN. THHN. Any question, guys, about this? Can you back up to your primary feeder? No, not big deal. Um, aren't you taking 15 
100 kVA for the primary. It's not a bit. It's it's a one, one five hundred kVA three phase transformer. Okay, so the whole works. The whole. It's not for coil. No, it's not a coil one. Chris, do you see that big box here that I drew the blue? The the blue box is indicate that's a three phase transformer. I should make it clear. So it is a three. Everybody knows that's a three phase transformer. It's not three single phase transformers. It's a three big fat transformer. If it was a three single phase uh, coil together, you're absolutely right. You multiply by three. Any question, guys? So that's it. You're going to ease it. I'll PDF this one, and oh, this time we, I will put it on the network. Don't we have to run the short circuit calculation? Ah, there's one more short circuit calculation. Thank you. I'm in a hurry here. Um, oh, we have a few of them yet. Yeah. What's going on here? I thought we were done here, Chris. I think I'm in a hurry here. This one? So number two, let's go. We have a few other places yet to do. I thought that's the last thing. Okay, Alaribo, let me know, guys, when you're done with this slide. Yeah, we still have to do the primary overcompetition device. Cool? All right, so let's go. Do number three. Number three, guys, is the primary overcomplication device. The primary says three multiplied by six nine point four. That will get you a healthy two or eight amps. This is from four fifty dot three a and you see code book. And if it's not a standard, you have to go. No, you have to, but you can. You can go up. And if you go up to this baby. You're going to end up, um, so you take the 208 to 24.6, 240.6, I'll give you 225 amps. 225 amps. Any question about this, guys? Why did they go up? Because there's a note number one. If you go to the table, guys, underneath it says if you don't hit the jackpot and you hit an actual standard, you are allowed to go up. You don't have to. On the test, if you don't go, I will dock you guys because the maximum of temperature device. The secondary piece of cake, guys, based on the same table, you go 1.25 multiplied by 601 uh, or 02, like my friend says, 751 amp. Take this one to table 240.6, not table, our uh, section. And that will get you an easy 800 amp circuit breaker okay, or fuse. Can we go back to the table for 50.3? It was oh, A between. Okay, A. There are two tables. Oh, yeah, I see ratings, yeah, or A. A is. You use A if either the primary or the secondary is higher than 600 volts, right? In my case, I have 4160, so I have to go to A. Okay. Okay? And I use 3 because I'm using a fuse. Right? I'm asking for a fuse. In the secondary side, I think it doesn't matter, does it? In that table, I can't remember. Does it matter if it's a fuse on the secondary side or the circuit breaker? Well, our secondary side is over. Um... It's less than 600 volt. So then we'll go down here. No, you go to the same table to the secondary side. Oh, we still use the same table. Same table on the secondary side. Even though we're under. You use you use B if the primary uh, you use you use table B if the primary and not or and the secondary are less six hundred volt or less. That's when you use B. For all other cases, you have to use A. And B cable on the primary. On the secondary, it's like any other cable. Okay, I can flash this one in a second. Let me just do a short circuit. For the short circuit, guys, this piece of cake, the short circuit is always, almost always on the secondary. So you take 601 divided by the impedance, which is uh, 0 0.05, right? And that will get you a healthy 12,000 amps. 
give you a healthy 12,000 amps, give or take. 12,000 amps. If you want to write this Z, the impedance, the current on the secondary, always a second. Any question, guys? Any question? Piece of cake. I'll flash this one in a second here. I don't know if I have the. Okay, that's about it.